What's up, y'all? I hope you're having an amazing Tuesday. Oh, I'm just here casually in New York City, having the time of my life. <laughs> I really am hustling and creating as much content for you guys. While I'm here, I finally made the Patreon account live, and the first bonus episode is up. I also released a huge announcement that only Patreons can hear for the next week, and the new artwork for the show on Patreon. So what the hell is Patreon, Patreon, Patreon? Patreon is our private community. I love to create content and bring you more and more episodes and videos but in order for me to do this i need a lot more studio time that i have to book and the production behind this is so much more so when you join i didn't want to make you my supporters break the bank to be able to support me so for only three dollars a month you get an extra episode exclusive only to you guys on patreon and for five dollars you get two extra episodes a month along with bonus written and video content when we reach 50 patrons, the regular episodes on this feed, the video for them will actually be on Patreon so you can see us and what we're doing and how we record. And you'll get behind the scenes with those like right before we start at recording. After we're done recording, like a, a couple of minutes after that. And then the first 100 patrons will receive a gift in the mail that no one else can get. They will never be for sale. So go to patreon.com slash shit. I'm 30. 30. That is P A T R E O N dot com slash shit. I'm 30. I'm also going to link this in the description of this episode to support the show. Now, let's get started with this week's episode. Welcome back to another episode of Shit I'm 30 with your host, Anthony. And I have here with me. So you change your name again. Oh, bitch, I have multiple names. I, I go by multiple uh, multiple alias. But, uh, you know, I got a, a client that just called me, so I was in Anthony mindset. Oh, okay. Yeah. With me, your host, Carla Womaris. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, friend, it's the beginning of the week. At, well, it is. is it's it? Wednesday. Yeah. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. There's you know? only three days left of school for Ayana. Mm-hmm. That just that just hit me. Like school's almost over, which means she's going to high school. Bitch, it was so much traffic on the way over here. By the way, and I I, I think I need to be reimbursed for mileage or some shit, girl. Because get, this, this, get this, out, this, shut this, up. Shit is crazy. So, <laughs> 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 all right. So, shit you should know this week. It was a mayor um, in Clarksdale, Mississippi, that is offering to pay drug dealers, gang members, or anyone to do any type of crime up to ten thousand dollars to leave his city. All right. So, girl, you want to take this over? You having a hard time, Oda? Yeah. Go ahead, take this, <laughs> take this over. So, basically, Mr. Espy, he is the mayor of Clarksdale, Mississippi. He's saying that if you are a drug dealer, you are a gang member, or you're thinking about doing some type of criminal activity, he will give you $10,000 out of his pocket. And now he is asking for businessmen and philanthropists in the city to do the same thing and assist the fund to go ahead and give this out. According to the police chief, um, the homicides have gone down from 12 in 2018 to one so far this year. We're only in May, sir. So, um, <laughs> he so was a like, lot of killings bitch, that can have- happen from <laughs> now to December. Um, so if you are from Clarksdale, Mississippi, you know, just let him know that you're thinking about doing some hard crimes in that city. <laughs> get the check and get the fuck out. Right. Like, apparently it is working. I mean, to go from 12, I, we're, we're halfway throughout the year. So one homicide is pretty good. I mean, I, it, 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 it works. How big is Clarksdale, Mississippi? I don't know. I never heard of Clarksdale, Mississippi Me before until recently. But apparently there's this mostly black people there. Um, the mayor, by the way, is also is black. black. And I think the police chief, her name is Sandra Williams, so I would think she's black with a name like that. But don't most of the assume now. <laughs> <laughs> right. Don't fetch it. Right, right. But I mean, listen, it's working. Um, people are taking this money and I don't going think it's leave. working. Yeah. That, that I'm not going to uh, attribute him saying he's going to give ten thousand dollars to gang members so what about bike gangs it was up of to white 10, people what about the kkk what about white collar crime so are we okay with those felons well, they're good to stay there because why because they make money off of wall street or whatever they do in clark's he didn't specify he, he didn't speci- specified drug dealers yeah. he specified gang members okay and he specified anyone that's willing to this clearly he didn't say anything about bank fraud he didn't say anything about no well, he was he was talking about like harmful, violent crimes and stuff like that. Listen, oh. I and so it, the other one. So we're we're choosing felons now. Listen, I think it's I think it's an outdated uh, method that he's using. I think it's so many other ways that he could have uh, that he can do, such as uh, rehabilitation programs and um, counseling and all this other stuff. But hey, he put he paying for it out of his pocket, so he's putting his money where his mouth is. It ain't hurting nobody but himself. I think this is stupid. Why not give that money out of his pocket to teachers to teach the generation that's coming up, these children from school, hey, this is what you can do. Put it into trade. Come up with a trade company that says, let me teach these criminals how they can turn their drug 
business into a legal one. Let's use this money. Let's put this into our community. Why not have an, a, a big company like maybe not Amazon or something smaller come into Clarksdale and then employ these people and do and, and make them employable? So what I read, this is like this is a part of like a five step program um, that the police uh, department has to approve. Um, so I, I, I guess it's a whole, it's a, it's a whole entire package that these people have to go through in order to actually qualify for this money. I didn't, you know, I don't, didn't go into de- uh, detail or research to find out exactly what this five step program was. However, it is out there. And if you're doing some crime in Clarksdale, uh, Mississippi, you can go ahead and get paid. If New York gets really hard for me, I'm going to move to Clarksdale. <laughs> I'm going to sell a couple of Just eights or whatever it's called. <laughs> and I'm going to say, I need these 10 grand and right. come back home. Come back home. Well, right. Yeah. This is stupid. I really, really do think it's extremely dumb. I think he needs to put that towards his community. Like, most likely, the people that are in Clarksdale doing this, it is 80% black. It is. Teach them something. It is. Teach them. You're a black man yourself. You were able to get out, so why not put it back into the community that you came from? You're a fucking coon. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call him a coon. Yeah, he But I just, I just think he's dumb. Uh, you, you just don't know what... You're wasting your money, to be honest with you. It's not a smart business decision You're looking for a side bitch? Because <laughs> clearly you, you got money to give away. You got money to give Hello. away. Hello, you want Tinder bit? Like, look, come on. Bitch, look, I dress up like a fucking <laughs> like a fucking thug, bitch. And look, hey, we role playing this right. motherfucker. You paying Shit. this amount of money? Fuck. So we are doing a uh, episode today on converting to Islam. Um, me and Carla was talking. I was listening to a podcast actually uh, on my way back from Miami when we were coming from Rolling Loud, and uh, basically the podcast van, um, or the Red Pill. He brought on a guy from the Nation of Islam, and um, I was just like, you know, hey, I really don't know much about it. And then I met a dear friend that happened to be uh, Muslim as well, and he's black. And, you know, I was like, I asked him some questions and realized I don't know much about this topic whatsoever because it's not really taught or publicized. The only thing I know about Muslims is that um, they're terrorists. It's the art of they're terrorists. And according they took to over 9-11. Yes, yes, that's, yes. That's all we know. So um, doing my research, Islam is becoming one of the uh, um, one of the West fastest growing religion. Um, and it's also one of the most understood in the U.S. Majority. Uh, huh? Misunderstood. That's what I said. I said okay. understood. Misunderstood. Misunderstood. That's what I said. Okay. Sorry. Bitch, I, I, I'm distracted by your titty. If y'all are watching this on video, he got a whole titty out that I just keep staring at <laughs> while he's sitting here talking. Bitch, it is also 98 fucking degrees outside. It's we are in the middle. In the we are in the middle of a heat wave. Bitch, it's still a little hot here because I'm sweating up under my arms right now. It's, it's a little, girl, I mean, you might as well, bitch. You know, but getting back to getting back you know put my titty to the side getting back to the topic at hand so the majority of the u.s uh the, the major of, uh, majority of muslims are african-american which makes up one third of the muslim population however the latin community is one of the most fastest growing that are joining the muslim population so our guest here today can you introduce yourself tell us a little about, you, about yourself yeah sure so um it's great to be sharing space with you anthony uh-huh. as well as thank you for coming. you queen thank you for having <laughs> me and it's great to be sharing space with all of you amazing He's free so thinkers thought leaders and um family members of my tribe i am daniel downer and uh, I am the founder of the Bros and Combo Initiative, which is an amazing grassroots organization where we focus on building community, uh, promoting happiness, and protecting the well-being of young men of color. Mm-hmm. So I I'm just here. Founder. Yeah. <laughs> we out here doing the damn thing, y'all. Yes. You know, if we don't create our own shit and our right. own spaces, like who else is going to do it? Nobody. Right? Right. They're going to pay you ten thousand dollars to get out. Exactly. You know, Carla and I <laughs> wanted to do a, uh, we're going to do a HIV awareness episode. And um, he does so much work in the community. And he was the first person I thought of. And like I said, he and I met, met for tea one day. And this man just laid down some education. I called Carla was like, oh, my God, this man is so fucking smart. Like, he's doing <laughs> so much. I mean, honestly, whenever you want to see a change, you actually start, like, you, 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 you get up and you do it. Um, mm-hmm. which is amazing. I'm so inspired by it. So, Daniel, tell us a little bit about your story. I know you're you're Muslim. Um, I see. What is this called on your head? I keep so, forgetting. it's called a kufi. Okay. Um, How do yeah. you spell that? So, K-U-F-I. Okay. A kufi, and it's uh, a traditional headpiece that is worn by, by most men um, who are Muslim. You wear it all the time? I wear it all the time, except for I've gotten qu- crazy questions like, do I wear it when I take a shower or when I go to bed? No. 
<laughs> I don't. Um, but it's for me, it is a a a symbolic um, statement of of the pride that I have um, being a a man of color, being being a Muslim man of color, um, and the rich history behind my my race, behind my my religion and my spiritual journey. Have you, were you born into? No. Do you say were you born in like when we say Christian? Were you born mm-hmm. into Christian? How do you say it, dude? Were you born into Muslim? No, or? I wasn't actually. So I grew up as a PK, um, which is a preacher's kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, both of my parents uh, were and still are active in ministry in the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Oh, okay. Um, and so I told people I basically kind of like even while I was being conceived, mm-hmm. faith was like something that was connected to me. Right. Um, and so. That's where my spiritual journey really began uh, with Christianity. Um, and I kind of had shared a little bit with, yeah. with Anthony about um, how I think it's very important for, for us as individuals to have our own spiritual connection. Um, and so growing up, I, I just kind of felt like, have you ever been in a space where you're kind of just like going through the motions? Like yeah. it's like a routine, it's mm-hmm. a standard. Um, and so I think I, I, I kind of felt like I was, I was more so practicing um, denomination more than I was practicing like religion or spirituality. Back mm-hmm. when you were with the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Yes. Okay. Um, and so... Uh, that was kind of like my first my first run in with 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 my spiritual journey and i remember having so many so many questions about um god uh what did that mean uh what did that mean personally to me in my life why why were why why was i doing certain things uh why did we go to church on saturday like mm-hmm. why why um why did we not eat um, certain foods. Uh, how did we know that we were going to go to heaven and that we were going to be the only ones? Mm-hmm. Um, and so these were questions that that I posed not only to to my parents who who were who were leaders um, of our local church, but to other other leaders um, in the denomination. And I quite I just didn't get the answer that um, not necessarily that I wanted, but I just didn't get the answer that I was expecting. Mm-hmm. Like everything was what was they telling you? Uh, Faith based? It was it was based on denomination. It was just okay. like because like um like in our in our communities of color, in our families of color, um, when something happens, we're told like, you don't take it on the outside. Mm-hmm. Well why? Because you don't take it out <laughs> on the outside. Mm-hmm. That's the answer, Keep right? Keep in this house. What goes um, in this house stays in this house. And so the, those were the answers that I was getting, which is kind of like, oh, well, because because it is. Because, because it's something out. that has happened. Um, and that wasn't necessarily... I kind of felt, hmm, that's not, that's not really the answer. Um, and as I began to grow and come into my own and develop and realize that that I not only identified as um, a man of color, but as a queer man of color, um, being in uh, that fellowship became a lot uh, problematic. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, I experienced roughly three to four years of, of conversion therapy which I'm not sure if anyone is familiar. No. What's conversion so, therapy? What so you... conversion therapy is basically... Um, like, were they trying to make you not homosexual? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll be damned. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Through the church? Y- well, yes. Um, and so it was uh, continuous years of mental, verbal, and emotional abuse. Uh, that what do they do so there were there were a, a lot of different things so there were uh exorcisms oh, um wow. where wow like there would be a group of church leaders that would be around and they would have like holy water and holy oil and basically kind of like pray and manhandle like the demon spirit out right of pray you. to gay away exactly um and then there were more darker moments where it was just like physical beatings, just like so they were gonna beat the gay at you. Yeah, just like it was like repeated physical physical beatings. Who would beat you? Um, this was mostly at the hand of my parents. Okay. <laughs> uh, and so I think, needless to say, 
that definitely created um, a divide in mm-hmm. our in our in our relationship. And 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 eventually, what ended up happening um, was I was taken um, custody. I was taken away from them, and custody was granted to my to my grandparents just because of um, just how the abuse was taken. The government got involved, or yes, okay. so um, law enforcement got involved um, to kind of intercede, which I'm I'm kind of thankful how old were for. You? Uh, my conversion therapy started at the age of 13, and it ran uh, until I was about. I would say 17 ish. You were damn near wow. a grown man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. So what brought you to, um, to Islam? So, then? yes. So all of that happened and I came to the realize in my mind, I kind of felt like we're taught that God is love and that God embodies love. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, if God is love and that's what, um, God embodies, then, clearly i'm 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 in the wrong space and the wrong place um and so i relocated to atlanta georgia to go to college from here from orlando born and raised um went off to college and was kind of in a a limbo space of kind of figuring out myself and also figuring out my spirituality Uh, and i'll never forget i um would frequent the west end to uh, visit friends that were at the Atlanta University Center, Morehouse, Spellman, um, and Clark. And there was always this uh, Muslim street preacher that was outside of the train station. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. well, I always walk by and be like, oh, he, you know, it's just a street preacher, like, talking stuff, selling bean pies, you know, doing <laughs> all, like, right. all of those, con- you know, misconceptions and assumptions we have in our head. Um and it, I, I just, I remember it so vividly that there was, like, there was a day where I was really kind of, like, in a space where I was trying to be, like, spiritually connected. I was like, okay, I need to be spiritually connected to something. Like, I kind of feel like that's missing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will never forget. talked about that today. Yeah. I, oh, I, I on the way over here, yeah. And I will never forget, I was coming outside of the West End Marta station, and he was there. And he, he, he basically was preaching about love and how um, God is love and how he, 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 he wants to create a fellowship of believers who, who love one another, who understand one another, who come from all different walks of life, different lived experiences and different um, identities and he looked at me like dead in my eye and he was like there is room in this house for you brother all of you and I think in that moment I kind of felt like he understood like what I was bringing into the space that I wasn't only a man of color who was trying to find a sense of spirituality but that I was a queer man of color mm-hmm. was um, he no he was not he was not. And so um, he and I, we began to... Was, was he not black? What was his nationality? Yes, he was. He, oh, was, he was black. black. Okay. So he was black. Yeah. He, he was a man. I was a tenth of one chance. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was black. <laughs> but, you know, I think, I think that speaks to, like, a lot of times we hear about um, people saying energy and, and spirits and, right. and connections. And we're like, oh, that's some trippy, like, weirded out stuff. I believe in energy. Um, yeah. But I think it's I think it's really I think it's really true. I think that, you know, some of us are are gifted with with the gift of, of discernment, of feeling like energy off of individuals. And I think in that moment he felt that mm-hmm. um, and realized, like, this is this is someone that that I definitely need to to reach out to and bring, um, bring into the fellowship. Right. So he was my first introduction, um, to, to the Muslim faith. So he told you to come to the house. Where was the house? He told me to come to the house. The house, uh, the house was over on the West end. Um, so it was, was, actual, actual, it was a mosque. It was oh. a mosque. Um, that's not, that's a church, yeah. Mosque. Mosque. Yeah. <laughs> you get these words right. No, you're, <laughs> you get these Listen, words right. You know, I consider a mosque a church. I consider yeah. it a house of worship. So church is um, where people come and congregate together to uh, yeah, I share went to a commonality. One of those mosques in Dubai, and I swear after I just still call it a church. I said I need to get my life together. So what's the difference between 
between that is it a difference between the Muslim religion or Islam religion in Dubai, for example, in the Middle East compared to what's over here in America? Yeah. So I think a lot of times like we um, we hear the word like Muslim and we automatically think of Arabs. like the nation, the nation of Islam or Arabs, like mm-hmm. those two extremes. Yes. But That's there's what such, I think of. There's such um, there's so many other gradients or other like beliefs oh, so in between like denominations kind of like protestant mm-hmm. yes and oh bitch like yes. baptist baptist mm-hmm. protestant oh. non-denominational so oh, okay. so sunni muslims um which are more um traditional like um we think of over in the eastern world mm-hmm. like arabs um, yes have more traditional traditional views mm-hmm. um as far as lifestyle as far as religion and spirituality mm-hmm. um and then you go down to um some more progressive, um, progressive sex, 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 <laughs> um, like, um, the, the one that I'm a part of, which is, um, progressive, progressive mo- Muslim values, okay. which is specifically, um, a conglomeration of, um, Muslim, um, queer LGBTQ, uh, plus Muslims. Okay. Um, which is very oh, interesting. Well, it was interesting because when you told me you were Muslim, I'm like, but you're gay. Yeah, I understand how the the Islam believe like how. Yeah, they, so tra- and and traditional traditional like Sunni Muslims definitely do not. So what is the Shia or Shia or Sh- there's another one? It's like Sunni and then there's Shia. Do you know about that one? Yes. Uh. So uh. Shia Shia, Shia <laughs> excuse me Shia Muslims they um they have similar views to to Sunnis but are a little bit more progressive in their in their thinking and their in their thought Mm -hmm. um and so um they they also have um they're what we call five pillars of 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 Islam um and so in that sect they actually add on to the five and they have their own their oh, okay. own as well I mean Christianity Um, does that too there's so many different aspects of Christianity that sometimes and there's what we'll talk about in a little while. Mm-hmm. But it's like the extreme Christian. It's just like there's yeah, the extreme yeah. Islam. I mean, there's similarities. I think, you know, we all have um we all have like faith, right? Which right. is like the basis of what what we believe in. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that faith we have different different um denominations. When I was in, oh, go ahead. when I was in school, uh, I took a mythology course mm-hmm. and we learned uh basically religion is a myth, right? It's, it's basically what it is. But in the world we have the big three. We have uh Christianity Muslim and Jewish, right? Um, which all share the same God. We just call them different names right. and everything like that. It's basically the same religion, but we just broke off, I guess, and started our own. They started their own. I don't know. I It's so long ago when I took that, but I do know it's the top three religions. Before um, we in get world. into like what Muslim is like and Islam and all that, there's I chose five different uh-huh. misconceptions about Muslims yeah. that we all, I here in America, I would say, we would say, oh, this is one. And like Muslims are all Arabs. Clearly not, if you're looking. He's a black man. Yes. <laughs> and the motherfuckers that come knocking on the door to and selling bean pies, too. <laughs> and you know, bean pies. they black as fuck. Them bow ties, they be sharp as fuck. And they be hot as, hot, hot as fuck outside. Uh, right. What does that money go for the bean pies, by the way? Uh, so um, we believe in corpor- uh, what we call corporative economics, uh-huh. which is uh, sustaining ourselves and sustaining our community. So it goes back into that the into the local community. Cool. That's what's up. Another one is a uh, misconception is that Muslims don't believe in Jesus. Yeah, that is a misconception. She asked me, was Jesus in the Quran? I told her, yeah. Yeah, but he, yeah, is he just has a he has a different name. Allah. What's his name? Is Allah. it Allah? Yeah, same God. Oh. Just different names. Okay. Okay. Mm, yeah. I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to you, so I didn't we know all, that. So we all, I, I always stress to individuals that when we get to what people will call paradise or heaven, that uh-huh. we will all... We'll all come from different different walks. So and you so call it have, Jesus, you call it heaven as well. So our heaven or our par- our heaven is an equivalent of what Christ- Christians would consider heaven or paradise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We believe that um, those who believe in the teachings of of Muhammad um, are are going to be there, and that includes gotcha. believers and individuals who convert as well. So Muhammad is who is Muhammad? Is he 
is he also the same thing what jesus is basically it's like the second coming or something like that is that because i know you asked me you, you said something about muhammad earlier and i don't know who so muhammad they were basically what, what i saw here is that jesus was a prophet of yeah. god and then the whole muhammad thing he was like the last prophet that there wasn't the one that you guys look up to yeah, so he he's he's the messenger, the messenger of God. He's the one who yeah. who God bestowed to to provide, who gave who God gave uh, divine inspiration to to write some of um, to write the Quran and 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 teach us um, what it means to to be to be a Muslim, to be someone who who lives a life of integrity and who lives a life. Um, that is befitting uh, to go to paradise or heaven. Cool. Right, another one of the misconceptions were that Islam, Islam oppresses women. So you see them, from what I remember back then, like they have to walk behind the man, they have to cover up, they can't show anything, they can only have, like, I remember going to Dubai, and I was at Sephora, at the mall of Dubai, and the woman had to lift up, she wanted to try on a lipstick, so she lifted up her, what's this called? Oh, her, um... He, he hijab yeah well, she she had the head one but all, only her eyes were showing so she lifted put the lipstick on and just turned over to him and showed him the color he approved and she put it back down i said now damn well i know you ain't spending forty dollars on this damn lipstick for only him to see at home and be wearing it on your jihad but yeah. that made, <laughs> makes us believe here when we're not we're not educated enough to think oh there he's she's being oppressed right yeah, so I, th- I, you know, I think that's very, I think that's a prime example of Sunni, Sunni Muslims mm-hmm. that have a very traditional, a very, very much traditional. So that's view. like Christian women that um, can't wear pants; they have to wear I, a black. Skirt. Yeah, yes. I would like, I would liken that to um, individuals of the apostolic faith. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you're familiar with the apostolic faith, but they it. believe in you know women having head coverings, never wearing pants. They don't long. shave. Right, so I would liken I would liken well, it. Bitch, to you that. should join that. Um, you know, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, we're being so religious and we're throwing around cuss are. words. Stop cussing. No, it's you. But um, <laughs> the Lord is here. I, I I will preface and say, you know, I and I should have said this earlier that I do not speak on behalf of all. all of course, um, all you're Muslims. not the token like we I, the, no, you're yeah. not because, the token Muslim. Yeah, because you know we all we all have our different lived experiences. Right. Yeah, um, and I think my Mine is is just one small component um, of a lived experience as a queer Muslim, which vasts very differently from someone who who's a Sunni. How long have you been a Muslim now for? Uh, converted. Uh, I converted in two thousand and nine, so it's been ten years. Oh, it's been a long. Oh, you a Muslim, Muslim? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you for real? And w- token friend, it was cultural ambassador. He was saying he doesn't speak for all. That's a cultural right, ambassador. Right, he's not the yeah. ambassador yes. for all no queer black Muslims or Muslims, period. Yes. Another one was that Muhammad was the founder of Islam and Muslims worship Muhammad. Um, so um, we we worship Allah, who who is the equivalent of God. God. Um, and I would say that there is an appreciation and a reverence for, for the for the prophet Muhammad. Mm-hmm. That's what I saw. You guys just mm-hmm. look up to him yes. as a great prophet. Yeah, it's a the, reverence. As a good example of yeah. what a good Muslim so is. So he wrote the Quran, right? Yeah. So I was reading something like the uh, Bible is the interpretation of the word of God, but the Quran is the actual word of God, if I said that correctly or something like that. Is that how you guys Don't look at it? So I'm not, bitch. I'm <laughs> so I would say this about, I would say this about the Bible. Um, I feel that there are, there are components of the Bible that were definitely, um, divinely inspired yes as um as god spoke to to certain individuals Mm -hmm. i think where it gets a little bit um a little bit hazy is that i've always wondered why um if you look at the history of the christian church it's all there's been a history of conquering um conquering places and lands and then taking away their literature taking away their their history taking away um their dialect and then infusing something that's that's already there. Right. Um, and then even if we look at um, the King James version, mm-hmm. the K- King James approved that, right? Yeah. Um, no, they said people, King James is gay. Girl, I don't know. But I prophets, that, but prophets <laughs> had to write books of the Bible and it, uh, yeah, they but I, books. And they, I, I say that to say that I think while there are, are parts of the Bible that, that, that are divinely inspired, that there are a lot of opportunities where it seems that there's been... Um, personal propaganda infused yeah um and so i feel that um that takes away from 
from the integrity of it. Yeah. And I, if there are any Christians that are listening <laughs> or watching, you know, I know that you all are going to be in an uproar. Um, and I, res- I, and you know, I respect but that. Um, I tell people all the time, I don't. Get it makes you debates. wonder. Yeah. I've, and and those were no, questions I've that I've always asked. wondered. I yeah. grew up in Christianity. I was born into Christianity. My grandfather was a pastor. I was part of the worship and dance. I traveled. I did mm-hmm. all of this. I had my own ministry, and I always questioned. So. Religion. I think you're probably the first person I've brought on to speak about religion. I think, yeah. But I've always wanted to do things about religion because although I am and I consider myself a Christian, I have so many questions. Like, I'll tell you sometimes, like, well, I don't remember who in the Bible went against the, the, the lions and he didn't get in. And when Moses part of the Red Sea, was it Moses? Yes. Yeah. Like, did the sea really fucking part? Right. You like, know, did you really take a the Bible, Harry Potter thing? No, like, the Bible The Bible is poetry, right? And basically, it's, it's, it's with poetry, it can be embellished and everything like that. It's just like, it can be beautiful stories. But you but, can't tell that to a diehard Christian And that's either. the thing. So this is why I tell people, I don't get into debates, debates about uh, religion, especially Christianity, if you don't know your own history, about how the Bible was formed and all this other stuff. Like, you have to be educated on that part. Um, people had, people back in it, when the Bible was being formed, I, they wrote uh, books of the Bible and then basically the church chose what was going to be in the bible and what was not um so it's a lot of stuff that i learned that was like oh but this is not a part of the bible but this was the story that was actually written so right. who, who gave somebody to define in the venture to say okay yes this is right and this is not yeah i feel like all religions are faith-based so who are we to tell you what you what you believe in is wrong right. so and yeah. that's something that i don't agree when it comes to different religions especially well there's the one that i know which is christianity because they shame other religions like you're going to hell we're going to heaven. Well, bitch, you're sucking the pastor's dick. You're going to hell too. I, so yeah. like, I have yeah, my I own think, issues with this. So why judge you as a Muslim when you're out here doing certain things as well? Yeah. yeah, I think, and I think that's one of the things that drew me to being a Muslim was it, 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 there's a space where we're allowed to, to culture and foster free thought mm-hmm. and really kind of like question, like ask some really, really hard questions about like, what do I believe and is this right? Um, and be provided with with some answers. Um, and so I feel I feel that regardless of how you identify, if you identify as a Muslim, if you identify as a Christian, if you identify um, as an atheist, um, that we should be creating spaces where people can feel comfortable yeah. to kind of share their truth right. um, and we at least respect. Mm-hmm. You know, and even if you that. do come together and share each other's values or your faith, maybe let's say a Christian will turn Muslim or mm-hmm. the Muslim won't convert to Christianity. Just if you have the respect to speak to each other and say, well, this is my point of view. This is your point of view. Like, however it goes. Now, one, another one of the misconceptions is that Muslims support violence and terrorism. No. So we were taught that since 2011 or 2001, whenever the hell it was, 9-11, mm-hmm. that 2001. That must it was Muslims. Muslims, that's what they do. It's like what yeah. ISIS. They you are all killers. Like I have you in my house right now, and it's like, are you gonna bomb me? Type thing. I know you're not, but that's Bitch. the misconception. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that's no, that's yeah. that's definitely a myth. No, like it, you <laughs> but that's what the media it. has painted I, I, for I us. Bet to you think the white America. lady across the street probably saw him with his no. with his kufis here. I don't I don't right. get afraid when and, I see black men that that are Muslims because it's just like they they actually protected us in our community. Like a lot of Muslims, uh, the Nation of Islam. For example, um, I know they they protect a lot of uh, a lot of high profile people in the world. Uh, but that's because was, you're was, open minded. Yeah. But well, it's not I, even I, it was, it was will, taught to me. I, was I like, can yeah. understand and and share the sentiment that you have because a lot of times I do walk around with my kufi and and individuals look and I I get the what the fuck like what? what's going on right. and even even some from some of like um, communities of color like I always get the are you a Muslim. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a Muslim. To me, um, it's like you have now what society would say is like three strikes. You're black, mm-hmm. you're a man, you're gay, and now you want to be Muslim too. On top of that, you're already being yeah. crucified for being these three things that America mm-hmm. shuns upon. It's like you can't be black, male, and gay. It's, now you want to add Muslim, it, a terrorist. It's, it's, and to I would it? say, isn't it interesting that all those intersections, which are intersections, though, when you hear it, you kind of just think they're like. I think it's, I'm like, shit, that's a lot. That's a lot of oppression, basically. A yeah. lot of and oppression, lot but then it also takes a lot of, of strength, strength. Bo- to yeah. be able to walk, wake up every day with your kufi on and go to the, what was the church name again? The mosque. The mosque. <laughs> and, you, you know, you're doing all of these off of free will, knowing you're being judged, knowing people will oppress you, knowing that you're going to be treated a certain way. So how did you decide before? Because being black, being gay, and being a man, you can't help. 
mm-hmm. but being Muslim, you can. So what, when you were converting, what made you say, okay, I'm going to do this anyway. doesn't matter how society is looking at me. Yeah. So I want to, I'm going to answer that. I want to piggyback to the misconception. Mm-hmm. Muslims are not terrorists. Oh yes. Please tell about that. <laughs> Muslims yes. are definitely not terrorists. I think, um, with with everything, I, they're they're good people on this earth. Yeah. There there are bad people on this earth, um, and there's some bad people who re, who've realized that they can utilize uh, religion as a means to um, to kind of malign um, and take to advantage what they want to do. I liken um, terrorists who falsely use um, the practice and the faith of 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 Islam for their own purpose to. Um, there's a story in the Bible about uh, the man named uh, Barabbas, okay. right? I've heard it name. Where yeah. where there was a choice for the crowd to to save either Barabbas's life or 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 Jesus's life, mm-hmm. and Barabbas was a zealot. He was a what? Barabbas was a zealot. What's so, a zealot? So he was. Um, he was an- no. So at the time, <laughs> there were individuals. the The Israelites were under uh, the oppression of of Rome, right? The Roman Empire, okay. um, and so there were these uh, these zealots who kind of they felt that they wanted to fight back. We need to reclaim what's ours. We need to reclaim our heritage. We need to reclaim our land. Mm-hmm. We need to reclaim our power. It doesn't belong to. Um, to the Romans, oh, um, I just had to the Romans and they time. did. Um, they did some, some like they were about it. Like they were going into villages, burning shit. You know, <laughs> doing like they were doing the most, right? And so I liken, um, I liken that to like what we see with with these individuals who who clearly are not Muslims because we don't believe in taking life. Right. You don't believe in violence. No, life is precious, and we believe in sustaining it at all costs mm-hmm. um, and protecting not only our lives, but the lives of others around us who can't protect for themselves. Right. So I've read that Muslims, believe they're, they're anti-Semitic. Um, they don't really, like, they believe like the Jews had something and the Israelites had something to do with 9-11 and all this other stuff. This may have been up under the whole guise of the Nation of Islam. Um, but... Are Muslims anti-Semitic? Do do do. First of all, what is anti-Semitic? I'm, I feel stupid. They, go ahead. So, um, anti anti-Jewish mm-hmm. or against uh, um, against Jews? Okay. No. Um, so, at the core, at the foundation of of being a Muslim, mm-hmm. um, it's built around um, just some simple core values. Uh, you you love your higher being. Mm-hmm. You love and you do good to yourself and you love and you do good to others Mm -hmm. and um, maintaining peace. Peace is um, in the Quran. Peace and love and unity and acceptance are are themes that are brought up repeatedly um, Mm -hmm. because that's 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 what we're taught. Um, It is it is our goal and our purpose to to create peace um, in our space. And that includes with those who either who don't believe the same things that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when people say um, Muslims hate this group or don't like this group or want to kill this group, that's, that's completely, completely utterly false. So explain to me um, the nation of Islam. I was doing Mm -hmm. some research on these are, these are people that I've known growing up in our community. Uh, I know Malcolm X was part of the nation of Islam. Uh, Muhammad Ali Mm -hmm. was a part of the nation of Islam and some other popular people. And uh, they are the ones if I'm not mistaken, when we go to these football games and stuff like that, it's yelling out all this hate speech, like, you know, you're going to hell and everything like that for being gay and everything. So, they can you give me a little background of Nation of Islam? So the of Nation Islam? of Islam believes that gay people are going to hell? Uh, that that is, that is their view. That is their so, view. Oh, so some Muslims are against... Yes, like I said, there are tradition. There, there are... Um, Muslims who have a traditional traditional view, traditional um, outlook. Right, on. and there's some extremists. Mm-hmm. So the Nation of Islam is an African-American movement organization that combines elements of traditional Islam yes. with black um, nationalist ideas and yes. race-based theology, okay? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, they're currently being ran by Louis Farrakhan. Have you mm-hmm. heard of him? Mm-hmm. I've, I've heard so much about him, yeah. I really haven't done any research. Um, they were actually founded in Detroit. The way Louis Farrakhan talks. Man, <laughs> he, the million dollar, uh, you know. He's and, crazy. <laughs> that motherfucker crazy. But, you know, you hear so much. And so when I think of Muslim, I think of the nation of Islam. It started in Detroit, um, July 4th, 1930. So it's been around for a while now. 
Um, yeah, Farrakhan's old as fuck. I don't know how he's still alive. Yeah, yeah. Those, oh, yeah, he is old, girl. He's old as hell. He is. But when Farrakhan, so what I've read is that when it was started by uh, Wallace D. Ford, which is uh, Wallace uh, Fraud Muhammad, mm-hmm. um, when he converted over, uh, basically it started as this stream like ideas and all this other stuff and then he disappeared was killed or something like that and someone else took it over elijah i think and it became like this peaceful faith the nation of islam and then when farrakhan took it over he took it back to this extreme views that they once had which is you know i hate gay people uh white people or you know all this hate that they're spilling out and all this so other the stuff. nation of islam has a lot of hate uh, I, I'm not a spokesperson for the Nation yeah. of Islam. <laughs> and so um, the Nation of Islam, they probably will say no. No. Um, I I go based on uh, the messaging and the actions of individuals. And mm-hmm. so I leave that to, to you and to individuals who, who have seen the actions of the Nation so of I, Islam. So would you be accepted in the Nation of Islam? Um, I, I don't think that they would openly accept me they say they have fellowship. no problem with gay people but they just um, don't agree with our lifestyle because i think there's a i think there's a dip so i think let me let me clarify i think they would welcome me mm-hmm. um just i don't not think open arms. i don't think i would be affirmed which is there there's a big difference between being affirmed and being welcome being welcomed is okay like you can you can come like you can come into my house and right and you can come into my house right. but like it's my house my rules i think being affirmed is you can bring your your true authentic self right um so like i can bring my whole being i don't think i would be affirmed Mm -hmm. um i think i would be welcome what does it take to become a muslim so you came from christianity into muslim what did you have to do Did you just show up and that you're a muslim uh well that's that's the first step the first step is to have the intent (laughs) to want to um you know to want to to be able to convert um and then um i went uh under the the guide of some amazing um, leaders, um, Muslim leaders in Atlanta, um, went through um, an extensive journey about learning about not only myself but the Muslim faith before making that that final and that final declaration. What's the final declaration. Um, you just said you're Muslim. No, it was more so of just it was more so of like me saying like okay this is what i want to do Mm -hmm. um and them welcoming me welcoming me into their fellowship do you do anything like christianity where they baptize like a baptism yeah like a baptism Um, or something like that no i didn't have a baptism okay do they do baptisms no well there's so we have um we have a ritual washing but it's not it's not considered like a baptism are they washing the the it's called the gushel um but that's more of a washing um a way of impurities with water Yes. Like a shower? Like a shower, but... Take a quick bath. I want to picture it. Okay, so prime example. So we're celebrating Ramadan. Yes. We're, right. we're in Thank Ramadan. You. <laughs> explain, can you explain what Ramadan is? So you're hungry is right now? You know... <laughs> Maybe that's not a question you should ask me on. Your, you know, the mind oh, is strong, not, but the oh, body is weak. No, well, you're, you're not fine. supposed to eat. Yeah. Oh, so, and you're not supposed to be hungry. Um, you know, I think as for me, what I've learned is um, as I consistently practice Ramadan. Can you explain what Ramadan sure, is first? I can. Yeah. So <laughs> it is it is a time that that we as Muslims observe and and celebrate. Um, who we are, our heritage, our richness, our community, mm-hmm. but we also celebrate um, the divine time that um, that that God spoke to to the prophet Muhammad. Okay, um, and so it runs typically between twenty nine to thirty days. Okay, um, and so during that time, uh, we spend um, between sunrise and sunset fasting in prayer. Um, in devotion, um, in communion with one another, and in communion with God, mm-hmm. um, to strengthen um, to strengthen our spiritual journey and, st- and strengthen our faith. So, um, what about work? Uh, you, you are allowed to work. So it's a it's a little bit different from. Um, I know some individuals have said, "Well, is it kind of similar to Passover, mm-hmm. um, where sometimes we, um, um, some of our um, <laughs> brothers and sisters of of, of the Jewish um, That's Jewish faith, they don't work 
certain days out of so Passover, 30, but so we're allowed to days. work. Yes, sun 29 up, to 30 sun days. Down. From sunrise to sunset is spent in fasting and prayer. And then you go to work, and then, like, Sally's next to you eating a pizza. Yes. Mind so, over matter. Yeah, you know, I think, for me, what I've learned is that fasting allows me the opportunity to really clear my mind and really become in tune with, like, what my higher being and the universe is trying to, sex to share. Um, you do you you can have sex, um, but there is there's a the process. Time frame. Yeah. Yes, After you can do it during the so time. So you can right. So you can do it um, between sundown and sundown. when the sun goes down <laughs> and it rises. I like night sex. Um, anyway. But there is there is afterwards there is a process. Uh, the gushel. Um, oh, you have to wash where, yourself. Yes. Oh, you got to wash yourself. yourself after you have sex. Yes, because um, sex is. Is you are, you are not only physically um, taking on the impurities of someone, but you're spiritually as well. Like oh. there's a connection, mm-hmm. right? And so um, this is an act of purification where you're able to um, to purify yourself. I mean, y'all better that. be showering after sex um, anyway. But it's but, and, and I can explain how how it goes. Okay, um, so it starts with. Um, first, you having the intent of realizing, like, okay, I want to, like, I want to purify myself of this, okay. right? Um, and then... So sex is dirty? It's not that it's... I mean, well, Y'all it is. It? I mean, sex is... I wouldn't I mean, say sex dirty. is dirty, It might be a squirter. Is, you, not there all is, this. You got to wash it off. Right. You going to stop talking about squirting and there is an people? Ex- right. There is an exchange of, you know, bodily <laughs> fluids. See? Dirty. Um, but it starts with you, one, wanting the intent to purify yourself. Um, and then I would liken it to where you start with your hands, um, the purification of your, um, the purification of your hands with water, with water. Mm -hmm. Um, you start the process by doing an invocation, like in the name of Allah. Right. Um, and then you would wash, um, with your, starting with your right hand from the tip all the way up to the elbow. Mm -hmm. Um, and you do that three times and then you do the left to the elbow three times um and then that's a long bath then you do your you ain't um, never took a bath that long you do Ever. you know your, do you wash your legs you, you do <laughs> oh, um, just making sure but the areas like the sexual <laughs> organs those you'll you'll make sure that those are done as mm-hmm. well those are purified and then there's what i would consider almost like a full immersion where all of your body from the top of your head all the way down has to be covered and it has to be wet. Do you use a certain soap? Um, there isn't necessarily. I don't use soap. Um, Wait, what? I wouldn't recommend using soap. I, like I you don't, don't shower with soap or just during the cleansing? It's not a shower. It's the cleansing So it's a different. Oh. So this is a purification. It's, it's a ritual. Right. It's a ritual. So it's it's different from taking I'm stuck like a on bath the shower. or a shower. Oh, okay. So mm-hmm. you do the water part first and then when do you shower? You grew up in church, friend? So I didn't grow do... up in the, I didn't grow up Muslim. We just took no, a bath. I'm talking about like, because you don't, when you get baptized, you know, you don't have no soap, they, but you've been cleansed. dunk your head up in the water and you get back up and you keep it moving yeah. and then you go back to committing your sins for the rest of your life. Because it represents That's how something. Christianity right. works. So with you, the, get, <laughs> you get baptized once and you go back to being ain't shit, okay? So with the goose shell, it's more of a purification. So you would do all of the purification that needs to be done. Um, and then that would be followed by a salat or a prayer. And then if individuals decide that they want to take a shower after they do their salat, okay. so they're how, more than welcome to do. So how often do you do this the during pro- Ramadan? Every day or just after sex? The goose shell happens after sex if you have sex. Okay. okay. So right. y'all wake up every morning and pray at like 5 o'clock in the morning when the sun rises. Is that like one ritual that Muslims do? Yes, like so morning prayer? Yes. So there are um, like the five salats. of them, right? Yes, there are five salats and they're scattered throughout the day. Um, and those are the times that we we observe. I have a really do dope video prayer. from Dubai as you're walking because here there's not as many mosques. Right. Yes. But the mosque, the bell starts going off. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. So as you're walking through Dubai, it's like all of a sudden the bell starts ringing at the time and you just see everyone starts scattering and going to their mosques. And yes. it's like they're all going to pray. But you hear it and it's. It, the the time is amazing. What time? I, what time do? What times is the a lot? Because I just kept hearing the bell going. So think of your primary two are going to be in the beginning mm-hmm. um, of the day and at the end of sunset. Okay. Um, and then you have some scattered out. So there's like one um, like noon, mm-hmm. um, and then you have one in between noon and the end of sunset, and one between the morning and um, the middle of noon. So what if you're working? 
Or you're like, or you're doing in the middle of doing this podcast. Drop down by your desk. And you, you'll just say, hey, you guys, I got to take a break and I got to go pray. So once again, I gave the disclaimer that I don't speak, <laughs> speak on behalf of okay. all Muslims okay, got you. Um, <laughs> because there are some practices that I do not observe right. um, religiously. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I, I do do morning and evening prayer. Got okay. to do morning and evening prayer. All cool. Right. cool. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's like. And if I have the, op- if I have the opportunity to do like noonday prayer, I'll definitely like do noonday yeah, prayer. So you're, you're off that day. Mm-hmm. You'll do like it. Like on the weekends, I definitely do a lot more. Um, I get more closer to the quota of five than I do <laughs> during the weekday. It's like Christians are like, we go to church on Sunday. We should go on Tuesdays mm-hmm. for a prayer night and then on Wednesday yes. for this and on Saturday for this. And it's like, listen. But we. You don't get me on Sunday. So with Ramadan. Um, there is there is a fast um, between uh, sunrise and sunset, mm-hmm. um, and then um, typically um, eating and drinking is done during um, during those hours. Do you eat bacon? No, I don't no, eat. I don't eat bacon. They don't eat pork. First of all, <laughs> he says just... he is not the token Muslim, so he might be the one that eats but bacon. But you only no, think listen, about food, this girl. Is an, <laughs> this is an opportunity to ask questions. Yeah, no, what's she I, gonna ask I, about I, bacon? I don't. don't trust Puerto Rican ass. I don't, you know love pork. I don't eat. Um, I don't eat bacon. Did you eat bacon before converting? No, because inter- you see, interestingly, um, interestingly Good enough, um, when I uh, in the household that I was raised, uh. My we were raised on a, a kosher diet. Which is, oh, okay. Um, but my my mother, my biological mother, she was a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of like leaned a little bit more over to that. Every once in a while, I would take some chicken off the plate. Right. Um, but I leaned more to see. To it that. didn't have anything to do with Muslim. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, do we you know found- any Muslims that eat bacon? I don't know any Muslims that this bitch eat still bacon. on this bacon. This still bitch I'm is. sure you know. So, I'm sure there are. So she, we 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 did some research and we found out that a lot of Latins are actually yes. converting over to Muslims. So tying into the bacon thing, I don't know how they <laughs> I know, stop eating I know, bacon. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. Hispanics are actually the largest. Um, what's it called? Growing population. Growing population yes. of Muslim and Islam mm-hmm. here. And now they have one, I believe it's in Texas where they yeah. started the Islam in Spanish. Yes. For so to translate everything into Spanish. But I thought it was crazy because just like you, it's like you're black, you're gay, you're mm-hmm. a man. Now it's like you're Spanish. You're mm-hmm. called an immigrant. You're Mexican. And now you yes. want to be a Muslim on top of that. Like you're already yes. uh, considered an undocumented Im- um, immigrant. They yes. look at you as you don't speak our language. And now yes. you're a terrorist on top of so, that. So friend, I'm so happy you brought up that point. We as black people, black Christians, and when we see Trump spill hate about, or anybody spill hate against Muslims and all this other stuff. And we continue to say, listen, this is too close to home because it is a, a large population, especially here in America, bitch, we're Muslim, you know, Latin people are Muslim. So this stuff, does ties into us and stuff that we definitely have to be paying attention to and step up and speak about because it affects all of us yeah and i think you know about brown people yeah and i think you know you 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 shared so eloquently how like why would you choose this Mm -hmm. um and i think i only for myself there's such a a inner peace that that i've gotten since since converting such a calmness of like my spirit and of my mind Mm -hmm. um that i didn't have necessarily before and a lot of the the work that i do in the community has been has been really driven from like my sense of spirituality um when i converted over to muslim i really felt the need to be part of my community and and give back um and the fellowship really encouraged me to do that did you change your name no i did not change my name so not all muslims changed their name to muhammad no that was i thought they did oh why do they change your name um some in some prefer to to not have um a name that is that is more orthodox and given to them, mm-hmm. um, and and that's that's their that's Who, their choice. So they choose it themselves, or they have mm-hmm. someone within the community that changes their name for them. Like a, what is there a pastor in Muslim religion? There, there is a spiritual leader. There's a spiritual a leader. leader. Yeah, okay. there's a spiritual leader at the at the mosque. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. But individuals have the autonomy to to change their to change their name over. I um, mean, a lot of that's a driving force where they just kind of want to be. Um, more traditional Muslims wanting to be stripped of of Western culture and Western influences. I guess it's like people that join the Black Panther Party and say, "I want to get a w- get rid of my slave master's last mm-hmm. name, name, right. and they convert yes. their name over to an African name." Which yes. is, yeah, I respect. Mm-hmm. I feel like I learned a lot about Muslims and the Nation of Islam, or it, 
So it what Islam and Muslim? What's the difference? Before we is there a quick difference between it? I was I was chalked up on it because I'm like, are you Muslim or are you from? I are you Islam? It, are you Islamic? What yeah. what's the difference? So I'm a Muslim. Okay, so you um, you have nothing to do with Islam. I am a Muslim who pract. I am um, I am a Muslim who practices the Islam. Islamic faith. Oh, when I'm okay. not a part of the, the nation, nation of, of Islam. Islam. So no. it's an Islamic faith. Muslim mm-hmm. is an Islamic faith. Yes, I'm a Muslim who practices the Islamic faith. Um, and I have brothers and sisters who are part of the nation of Islam. They're just a specific, if you want to say, denomination. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for all that. Now you're going to stay here with us yeah. for unsolicited advice. Now that we learned all, everything we needed to learn about um, religion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a lot. Yeah. Religion, religion makes me nervous. We went to church a little bit. <laughs> yes, yeah. we, it was church. We, we need did. to have these conversations, though. Religion should be able to be, so I can understand your beliefs and right. all this other stuff, and you can understand my beliefs, and it should be, we should have more spaces You don't like have this. to shy away from someone because they're Muslim or because they are Hindu or because right. whatever they are, that's their belief, and it shouldn't. You shouldn't have judge them because of who they are. Just treat them for who they are as a person. Most religions... Or what they believe in. Right. Most religions just want to be... Just be good. Mm-hmm. Be good and you'll get back good. That's what it's all about. Even some atheists, they're just... They're good. So there's good seeds and bad seeds in all religions. So let's just be nice to each other. Let's just see what it is that they believe in. And if you don't believe in it, hey, just don't talk religion. You or know? ask questions. Do you feel... Do you feel some type of way when people come ask you questions about your No, faith? I actually really encourage questions because it, it, it really, to me, it shows like you're really trying, you really want to know, right. like you really mm-hmm. want to learn versus like making an assumption. So I, I welcome questions. I ask questions Christians, all the time. I, I want questions too. They're like, oh, we'll teach you whatever, but then they judge you. Like, <laughs> not if you don't know what I said. You know, <laughs> I think that's with everyone. But yeah, it's I, most religions. I, yeah. But you tied it like really well about just like at the at the basis and the core, it's understanding one another, loving one another, um, building community and space right. with yeah. one another and trying to encourage us um, to be to be our best selves that we can. Right. If you if you're good to yourself and to your community, good will come back to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go into solicited advice where we get somebody some advice and you can help us out with this one. OK, it's a little long, but. It's good. We might have to tie in back before your Muslim days because I know you're a good guy now. You're going to have to wash yourself with that, uh, you, yes, with you, that water. What's ooh, the name? Huh? You have to wash Goopy Goopa. What's the it called? Gooshell. <laughs> we have to, all three of us going to have to Goo Shell. No, bring some, I, I'm clean, but ask Carla. <laughs> bring some for Carla because Shut you know, up. this bitch on bathe. <laughs> I do bathe. Girl. Shut up. <laughs> Hey guys, let's take a quick break to let you know that there's something that I've been telling you guys that I do often and coincidentally, Anthony does the exact same thing and he Mm -hmm. loves it and we want you guys to do it as well. We love listening to audiobooks. I post about it all the time and it's always on Audible. Listening makes us smarter, more connected to people. It makes us better partners, parents, and leaders. And there's no better place to start listening than Audible. Audible members now get to have more than ever before. Members now choose three titles every single month. One audiobook plus two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. Members also have unlimited access to more than 100 audio-guided fitness and meditation programs. Now, I'm still working on my meditation, so I'm definitely going to get one of these. Audible delivers bestsellers, business, self-improvement, which we can all use, memoirs, and more. Yes, that's right, Carla. Audible members can also get free access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post delivered daily to the Audible app. With the convenient app, members can access Audible anytime, at the gym, while commuting, on the go, and on any device. It will always pick off right where you left off. Audible also offers free and easy Audible book exchanges, credits you can roll over for a year, and a library you keep forever, even if you cancel. Now that you hear that fact, even if you cancel, you keep your books forever. So start listening today with a 30-day Audible trial and your first audiobook plus two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash Carla30 or to make it even easier, text right now Carla30 to 500-500. Again, that is audible.com slash Carla30 or text Carla30 to 500-500. Listen, Audible is so clutch. I'm currently listening to Michelle Obama's Becoming during my self-care uh, Saturdays. And man, it's an inspirational story. I love how she's telling the story about the racism and and and, and just the adversity she experienced with being first lady um, and also how she's trying to adjust to civilian life. Now, not only are you getting free books, like who turns down free stuff? 
but you're also supporting the show when you get the free trial. So once you get your book, let us know which one you're listening to so we can share our favorites as well. I'm definitely sharing mine on my stories all the time. But now let's get back to the show. (laughs) A while back, I was seeing this guy. He's young, attractive, hustler, thug type. Pretty much only good for casual stuff. Nothing serious. Anyway, he came over one night and I was extremely drunk. But I figured it was okay since he was nice and I trusted him. Plus, I had shown my friends his pictures, contact info, and the name just in case. So later that night, we're getting it in. You know what I'm saying? And there's a knock at the door. He goes to answer it. First of all, when I read this, why the fuck is he answering your door? Right, right. Bitch, you just met him. The fuck? Okay, but. Girl, that's. I digress. Let's go back. I guess you want to be a man of the house, so you let him do it. Oh, the apartment. He (laughs) (laughs) He goes to answer, and it's his friend, who I guess was waiting for him in the car, or maybe the dude just showed up on his own. I have no idea. I just heard him ask the guy if he had come up to use the restroom, and the guy said, yeah. So he came, he comes back to me and we resume to getting down mm-hmm. while his friend is in the bathroom. Then his friend comes out the bathroom and instead of leaving my apartment, he lays on my bed. Next thing my drunk ass knows, the friend is also involved. I didn't say anything at the time or resist because one, oh, I was drunk. Girl, this risk came right after religion. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I like it. <laughs> two, it was two of them. And three, they're two hood ass dudes who are bigger than me and I'm a single woman who lives alone. So the next day after I sobered up, I felt so uncomfortable about what had just happened. I told my friend and she promised me to, she made me promise to never talk to the guy again. And I agreed. He hit me up later that day, wanting to see me again. And I told him he should find another girl because I no longer feel safe with him. He asked why. And I told him it was because he brought a dude I didn't know into my house without asking me or even telling me what was going on. Even when I asked him who the guy was, I told him I no longer trust him and not to bring random men into my house. Or even a whole gang of dudes to do God knows what to me next time. Wow. Okay, girl. His only response to me was, man, fuck you. Whoa. I left it at that and did not react with him. Did not interact with him any further to that point and did not hear anything else from him from weeks. Fast forward to this morning when I get a phone call that wakes me up. It's him and he's asking if he can come over like nothing ever happened. I was half asleep and he wasn't even on my radar so I, or saved on my phone. So I thought he was the current guy I'm talking to. Okay. Later on, when I realized it was him, I texted him and let him know I thought he was someone else. And when he called and he reminded and reminded him that one last time we sp- spoke, he cussed me out. His response was, well, yeah. <laughs> Such a nigga. I'm honestly a bit, <laughs> a bit freaked out. I thought this was behind me and that he'd moved on. The fact he's not even acknowledging the things I've said about his behavior and just keeps asking to come over or texting me, what are you doing or where you're at? Has me like, is this dude crazy or just dumb? Does he still remember where I live? Why won't he just find someone else? I'm pretty, I'm feeling pretty unsafe right now. Help. Wow. She, Whew. wow. So I didn't know this was going to tie into this whole deep thing, to be honest with you. Right. Girl, it's a lot of stuff. I'm glad you titled this stuff unsafe because a lot of stuff you have done has been unsafe, especially being a woman living alone. Right. Like you meet a guy online you you describe as a thug type now uh, you know cool but then you allow this person that you don't know to come answer your door to bring another guy in and then you just continue on to have sex with them it's Even, like you're feeling unsafe like you said but you put yourself into you that put situation. yourself in this situation and not that you should continue it of yeah. course you can cut it off but it's like you're saying i was said, drunk but i did this I, how drunk were you really if you can recall you all recall of this all of this like Step by step, how it was all going on. You could have said no. Now, that does not mean, and from the whole thing, it was all consensual. Yeah. So you can't come back and say, like, oh, his friend came in. And f- no, you allowed it. You asked him. You never said, you don't say on here that you ever said no. So it's like, now block him, cut it off. And yeah, he probably still remembers where you live. You allowed him to come over. You know, you wanted to have sex with him. But at the same time, it's like, just because they're two hood ass dudes doesn't mean that you can't say no. Right. And that's for everyone. Like, you could have said no. And now, you can't say no and mm-hmm. say, I don't want to do this anymore. I block him. Like, you don't even have his name saved. What did you expect? Because his, the con- your friends had the contact. That doesn't mean something bad can't happen to you. Mm-hmm. And it's not about the fact that this two hood ass dude, because this could happen from two like white dudes that play lacrosse at some white video, um, uppity school, you know? It could happen anywhere. But you feel unsafe because you put yourself into that situation. It has happened. You know, James was just here, and he he had a client that the girl was drunk, and he uh, was caught carrying her to his uh to his, his car. car. And the lady she filed, you know, she said she was raped. 
uh, the guy recorded it and saw that the sex was consensual and right. all this other stuff and he was able to get off. So this happens to men all the time. Um, you, you guys definitely do have to set clear boundaries and let people know when you're uncomfortable. But you also have to put yourself in situations where you won't be in situations like this. Um, I, I, I do, for the guy's point of view, it's, it's, it's mixed signals in a sense right. because, for one, you, you allow him to open the, the door his friend was using the bathroom. You had sex with him and everything like that. You let the got the friend come in. Then you wake up the next day, said, "Hey, you know what was going on? I don't feel comfortable with you. I feel unsafe." He says, "Fuck you," and went on about his business. I guess he was horny again. You not taking the necessary precautions to actually set boundaries, like, "Hey," even blocking him, like Carla it's said. It's like she didn't even say on here. How did you say goodbye the next morning? Yeah, because she went straight to like, "I sobered up, felt uncomfortable about what happened." Okay, so so, so how did you tell him go? If I may jump in, yes. Yeah. Um, one, I would say that it's very important that we like have education and conversations around consent and what it looks like right. um whether that's a um a verbal no or whether that's one that's implied by body language it's, it should still be respected um i not i i'm not sure based on on the narrative but but definitely um consent is consent right and, it, and sometimes it's just like a a shrug it's still like a no um i would say also like Lean in on your strong girlfriends. It's, it sounds like uh, that she has like a, a great a great friendship, and so I would say like come up with something like um, something in place like for those situations. Um, my friends and I we have um, what we call like our friend agreements. If if one of us decides like you know that we're feeling like we're in the mood and we want you know something to jump off, like this mm-hmm. is what's gonna happen, like. This is the con- this is who the person is. Like this is where I'm going to be. Whether it's like sharing the location, if like I you know something, you yeah, like yeah. it's good to kind of have like that system um, system in place. And then I would also say, you know, um, being mindful of. Um, and I have this conversation with individuals all the time. Like, it's great to get turned up. Like, liquor, like, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of, like, relaxes us. It loosens us up. Right. Um, but it's also a moment for us to be to be mindful as well. Like, mm-hmm. um, being aware what of our surroundings. Yeah, being yeah. aware and, and, yeah. and what's, what's our limit. So I would say to her, like, develop a system with your good Judys, your good girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Um, know your limit. Um, and then, sure. like... If he called you back, like be explicitly clear, like yes. it's not happening. No, block the number, yes. right, delete like, it. You don't have it saved, and yeah. she's just like, "Oh, I accidentally said yes." You're doing a lot of accidents here. Yeah, you know, and it's like take responsibility for your actions as well because you let him open your door, you let the guy come in, you let the, you got it down with the guy, then you're like, "Oh yeah, yes, come over." Oh, I didn't know it was him. No, come on, like take responsibilities for your own mistakes and actions and then move forward from there. Not that saying that you're just wrong in this whole situation, not at all, but just from now, what can you do now? Block him, keep Mm -hmm. it moving. Get maybe if you feel that unsafe, you probably can't go and do, get like a legal thing because it's like everything was consensual. The man has done nothing wrong. Right. Nothing wrong. But if you feel unsafe, then go to Amazon and get you a camera yeah. or get one of those ring doorbells. Like you can do all of that. But I don't think this man is doing anything to hurt you. He was just like, all right, cool. You're down with, the, you're down with you know, me and my homeboy. Let's do it again because I had fun. You're right, right, right. You know, it, this this whole thing, girl, you better be lucky you just didn't get robbed right. because this whole yeah. thing, like it, it happens a lot and I, I'm just I'm just glad that it stopped where it was and yes. you and, and although you feel unsafe, you you, you you came out unscathed. Now you you, you may have given up some punani that you might not have wanted to, or maybe it'd have been the best it was of your good. life. It, was probably, it good. probably was good. But girl, listen, just going forward, just be more responsible because not only are you are you endangering your life, you're endangering the life of this guy because it seems like a lot of mid signals and stuff like that he's getting and if he continues on, he he can definitely, you know, be put in jail and all this right, stuff. Right. Rape, rape is really real. So I wonder yeah. if there are like any resources for like single, like single women. Um, I have no idea. All I know for me, my friend Carla has my location. Okay. Um, always. So I have her. She has mine. Like right now, I just checked it because I, I forget that like, she even has it. And I'm like, oh, you're in Panama City. Hmm, you're traveling. So you know, I can see what she's doing. Um, Amanda, when she went out of town, she was doing something. She went to go do a. Where's Duke? 
wherever the hell uh, uh, in North Carolina. In Durham. So she's okay. a huge like fan of Duke, and she had some, one of her fans come pick her up and take her to the school. She's like, oh, but she's a doctor. I'm like, good. So she knows how to drain your blood. She's gonna <laughs> kill you really good and chop you up into pieces. We're never gonna find you again. Oh, wow. So she sent me. I was like, send me your location for one, two, take a picture of her ID. And then send me yeah. her, take a picture of her license plate. Yeah. I, and she's like, you're psycho. I'm like, you know, shit's real. You don't know this girl. Let me just have your location if anything were to happen. Yeah. Like, you're vetting for yourself, but just make sure someone, so as a single woman, just have one of your friends that can always locate you, that you yeah. trust. Or yeah. even even going further than that, just like, hey, this guy's coming over, girl. If I'll call you back in 30 minutes, like, check on me in 30 minutes. Right. Like, and then, okay, give yeah. me a call back in an hour. And all this other stuff. And then I'll let you know if I feel safe and comfortable. And then I will check back into you after the zoo is done yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. You definitely have to make people aware. The so problem you know. with that is there are some girls that do everything so sneaky and they want to be undercover hoes. Honey. Undercover pe- hoes. Uh, being undercover gets you killed. Right. So, yeah. Very much so. And you're going to be undercover on somebody's cover is dead and we ain't never going to find you again. So have some friends. Mm-hmm. Don't be ashamed of what you're doing. If you don't feel like you can't tell anyone what you're doing. Like, right. And if you feel ashamed of what you're doing and you're doing it anyway, you're, you're not even being true to yourself. Well, I think that's what true friends are. Like, they understand they accept you for, like, who you are. Who you are. But some people so. don't have those friendships. They, they have such fake friendships, then even at our age. That, right. <laughs> definitely time to get new friends. Definitely, definitely. So, just get you a ring on one of them little camera things, girl. And so, yeah, we are. a little bit smarter next time. We are going to go to our next segment. Shit talk! You got a shit talk? <laughs> I do. Go ahead, friend. Okay, so, today I'm getting ready for this move, and I'm getting rid of some clothes, um, so I was going to go to Goodwill. So I said, oh, let me go to Plato's Closet. It was actually Mandy. She was like, isn't there a Plato's Closet over there on OBT? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, let me try it out. So I go there and I have this huge basket of clothes, which I wasn't planning on making any money off of it if I took it to Goodwill. But I'm like, all right, I have some Burberry shirts, though, some G-Star jeans. So that, those definitely I don't want to give away, but let me see how much money I can get for them. So she's like, oh, I'll come back in an hour. I drop them off. I went to the mall to do some things I needed to do. Come back. And she's like, okay, well, let me see your ID. You have $125. And I was like, boom dope because she most of my basket was still full that she only grabbed like maybe 10 things out of there so i said oh um is the burberry shirt in there she's like oh i'm not sure and i'm like mm, you know if you got a burberry shirt in there girl stop playing with me mm-hmm. so i'm looking she's like i don't see it but i don't see it in the basket of stuff she's not taking either and i'm like all right so we're gonna really she's like can you please not take it out of order because that's how we priced it and we're ready to put like prices on them and I said okay but I need to find this shirt because I don't see it in this baskets and I don't see it in this one either so where did the Burberry shirt go it's a fucking $300 t-shirt right so finally she finds it in that basket I'm like okay yeah take that one out so I'm thinking I'm gonna go down to like $60 right mm-hmm. like something is it's gonna go drop dramatically maybe like 30 40 bucks I don't know so it went from 125 and she's like okay well your new total is 122 Bitch, what? <laughs> Were you about to give me $3 for a Burberry t-shirt? You you playing with me, right? <laughs> so you can go ahead and buy it for $4 later right. with your homegirl? <laughs> right. You full of shit because y'all don't take... Um, Plato's Closet doesn't take designer stuff. High-end stuff. So yeah. I know for a fact she took that t-shirt so she can buy it herself. Yeah. But she couldn't fit it so she was probably going to give it to somebody because she was damn... She was way too big for that shirt. So girl, fuck you <laughs> for trying to take my Burberry shirt for $3. I took that shit right back and I'll wear it whenever the fuck I want to wear it again or I'll try to sell it on something else. But no, so whoever you are at Plato's Closet, thank you for the 122. Greatly appreciate it because most of the stuff was like Forever 21 thanks and they... I expected to just get a little bit of it but uh uh-uh. I'm not giving you my damn Burberry shirt for like, and then I'm like, well, you're not taking the G star pants. She's like, no, we don't take high end stuff, but you took the shirt. Mm. Okay. So mm. yeah, that kind of annoyed me a little bit, but I was glad I got the 122. I'm glad you did too, friend. I'm so she rich. was so happy. She got that 100. <laughs> I'm so rich. She was sitting here going about how much money she just made in the past couple of days, bitch. And I'm proud of you, bitch. That's a I'm, true hustler. Listen, that's what I respect about you. This I really week, do. I'm like, man, this is, Damn near equivalent to a week of pay. If well, I get the other, if I get my other um invoice paid. Well, listen, the hustle. I got my insurance due, and I got my um phone bill due. What so you want me to do? What you tell me? For? Hustle up some money so you can pay these damn bills, bitch. To pay your bills? Yeah. You, you gonna give me some dick? <gasps> I, Probably, listen, so. I don't prostitute. Why the fuck is anyway? I was trying to figure out what you're giving me <laughs> for me to pay my your bills. My friendship, bitch. <laughs> friendship. That's what we're talking about. Being close and everything like that, I, bitch. So close, it's not going to get your bills paid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> shit. So my shit talk for this uh, week, you guys. Um, 23-year-old Malaysia Booker oh, was found good, dead. Because this was going to be mine. Oh, you, no, go, you go ahead. You can do it. No, because you'll, like you'll do it. You'll do it. So Okay, cool. So 23-year-old Malaysia, <laughs> 23-year-old Malaysia Booker was found dead uh, last Sunday in Dallas. Uh, she's a black transgender woman. Um, you know, 
you guys probably don't know about this because of course you don't know when black trans women are being killed but it's my job and my duty to continue to uh make you guys aware so i first heard about malaysia a couple of uh weeks ago actually well in april uh she was coming out of her apartment complex and she hit a car uh tapped the car wasn't no damage or anything like that was done and uh, anything like that guy got out and of course he was mad and was screaming and i think uh from what i recall someone said that's a man and uh four guys uh actually got and and, and jumped her and you know beat her up <laughs> and um yeah thank god she didn't you know nothing happened to her you know she of course she, she got her ass whooped but again she, she didn't lose her life um then fast forward she was found dead on sunday now <clears throat> last year in 2018 26 trans black trans women were killed um, that are according to for. that are accounted for according to the human rights campaign child that's 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 a woman every other week every two weeks a black trans woman is killed and we don't know anything about it it's something that we don't talk about um i was talking to a friend of mine last night and uh he's bisexual and he was just saying how he doesn't um doesn't really deal he doesn't like guys being feminine he doesn't believe in trans women and i was like it's that thinking right there that causes situations like this to happen and we for, for one it's nothing for you guys to accept okay right. that's one thing we have to understand however anyone lives their life no one should have to walk this planet and this earth to be scared to come out their home that they're going to be killed no matter what they choose how they choose to live their life well i feel like you don't have to agree with it but you need to accept it there's nothing to agree with you can't agree with my sexuality you well, can't can agree we just with- say at the basis of it regardless of who 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 they are they're they're human beings and yes. a life is a life okay. yes exactly point blank no I'm saying, not, I'm saying you don't have to agree with what i'm doing but you need to respect me for like what i am see when i give you the power to agree over my lifestyle it's like i don't agree with you being spanish or i don't agree with you being that's spanish what, shopping in this public you don't I can't, have to agree with it's, me. it's nothing to agree with i am who i am this is not anything to change it, it shouldn't be up for you to make a decision about how you feel about my life and who i am that's that's nothing for you to agree upon honestly okay. it's, 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 it's and this and i think once we understand that like you 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 don't have a say so about how people live their lives so you guys uh again this is just me banging the runners you know daniel this, this is this is his space this is what he does he's advocate for us all the time you want to go in and say something? yeah no i just think you know we we've we have a right to to protect uh to protect black trans women mm-hmm. um they i i have some some black trans women that i that i know personally and and the the bravery and the courageousness that that they have to to be in in some of these spaces it it blows my mind yeah. like you know even though i i'm a queer man of color and not accepted in all spaces i still have a certain amount of access and privilege yeah where i can walk into a room um and not be you know not necessarily um be looked at a certain way or be put in harm's way but many of our our black trans sisters don't don't have that um and so what i what i I, what disappoints me the most is um, like you were sharing about like your friend who mm-hmm. I, identifies um, as bisexual. Are they a person of color? Yes. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Th- that disappoints me how like how we as um, members of of the LGBTQ community of color we can't we can't come together to protect our own exactly. right. And so many um, many of our our trans sisters are dealing with oppression and um, bias and discrimination and prejudice um, at the hands of like privileged folks and the oppressors, the mm-hmm. colonizers, whatever we want to call them. And then they come into a space where they're supposed to be safe and, and we can't even protect them. Right. And, and we consider ourselves men, correct? Right. Exactly. Right. And, and it isn't our job to, to protect our women. Yes. Right. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a little, inf- it's, it's a little infuriating. Um, and I share the equal sentiment of um, this this thought that because because they are black trans women that their life is is disposable. It's disposable, right? It doesn't right? matter. Which is, yeah, yeah. W- which isn't. Um, I know we had one recently that happened um, in Atlanta. I'm uh, not Atlanta in Orlando. Uh, I remember la- that one. Yeah, last year. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and and she was misgendered. Yes, yeah, she was. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. was which was crazy. The news were all saying um, like him and yeah. all this. Yeah, and but what, what but what was the beautiful thing about that was that the Orlando community heard it, right? Picked up on it, mm-hmm. um, and we are um, not. Um, her name is Mulan um, Montrese Williams. She's an amazing, phenomenal uh, black trans woman advocate. Um, she organized this amazing like phone bank and email bank to have the community like flood the news channel. Um, mm-hmm. And so they they cor- they corrected it. And and I think we need more of that. We need, um, especially for men, mm-hmm. um, men that identify in this community. Um, we have the access. Um, and so um, I was sharing with someone when I saw this um, that we need to create a space where we provide our black trans sisters uh, maybe a self-defense class. Um, yeah. And I'm looking I'm looking into um, my organization, uh, the Bros and Convo Initiative, purchasing um, stun guns mm. um, and providing them to... <laughs> or to just black- like real guns. Yeah. They want to... Yeah. We it's can't little, have abortions, but I, we can't have guns, so let's go ahead and shoot them. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, I think the stuff, you know, somebody said that. They were like, well, why don't you just give them a gun? Um, the process to, to get a permit for a black trans woman is a whole other process. Yeah. Um, why? Because of the transition? Yeah. Be, um, I, yes, because um, one, a lot of um, black trans women do not have the resources to change not only their gender marker, um, mm-hmm. but also their name. Yes. Um, and so if, um, there, if, if, if my black trans sisters aren't even able to, to do that, um, I don't expect them to be able to to, to file to get a permit I to didn't carry. Even think they of can't that. take. Yeah, they um, can't. Because it's like it, yeah. You have to have but a stun gun is you don't have to have a mm-hmm. permit, pepper spray. Right? Yeah. So I think it's a knife, a you know I think it's, it's realizing that and being like okay like let's create a space where where you learn to defend yourself. Right. Maybe we um, as a community come together and um, and create some type of system, some type of organizing, or or give you something that in the in the sense that you feel like you know your life is in jeopardy that that you can um, that's something we don't think of and i don't. can't wait to do the trans um episode. episode because sometimes we think about all these things that are going wrong in our lives and we don't think about how blessed we are mm-hmm. with yes. what we have it's like something yeah. as simple as getting a permit that is open to any and everyone mm-hmm. really um they can't do or how they're not safe because of certain things and you don't have to be a, a trans person you don't have to be of the community to sit there and have compassion for them and say well what can i do yes you know use your how privilege. can i help you yes like the same way we ask for white people to have yes. to use the white privilege yes we can use our heterosexual privilege we can use i can use my privilege as a woman for a mm-hmm. trans woman you can use your male privilege to to yeah. protect them yeah. as a woman you know they might have been born a man but this misogynistic thinking of well that's a man anyway they can protect themselves that's not how it works you know they yeah. are vulnerable not just because they're a woman but because they're a trans woman because they're not respected because they're not looked at as a woman so they have so many things that they're oppressed by right. let's help them let's be there for them and i don't know how but we have people like you born yeah. in the community we have who you just said here in orlando she is the coordinator assist for HIV AIDS um, organization Miracle of Love. Yes, Mulan. Yeah, she's so she's amazing. here if you're in Orlando. You're trying to fi- reach out to someone and say, what can I do? How can I help? Where can I volunteer my time? Yeah. We have plenty of time that we spend on Instagram. We were just, You and I were just doing on our phones how many hours I spend. I do most of my work off of my phone. So I'm like, my average is about 15, 16 hours a day on my phone and I'm doing it. But can I take an hour or two of that to don't need to do something else with my time? I absolutely can. So we can, I can reach out to someone. I can reach out to you once I'm gone, you know, Stop always thinking about yourself with people that there's people that need us and need our time. So, and I, I just want to leave off on this. You know, black trans women have are like we just said about Daniel. You're you're black. You're gay. You're queer. Uh, you're queer and you're a man and, and you're Muslim, right? For one, she's black. She she transitioned to be a woman. Women are already oppressed anyway. Right. Yes. And then on top of that, she's part of the LGBT community. Yes. There's three strikes. So we definitely have to use our privilege and actually speak up, especially for black women of color. We don't have the People of color don't have the same resources as the tr- white trans people or any other you know, trans people. It's like we we don't we don't we don't have the education. Uh, we don't we, we didn't have the platform or the community to really support us. So uh, yeah, my heart is out to the family. You know, you guys just be more aware of the things that you say and just understand that the thing how you believe and how you think can actually fuel this hate that we're seeing now. Yeah, we talk about Black Lives Matter that includes Black trans, trans lives. lives. Exactly. Correct. 
Well, I want to thank you so much, Daniel, for coming on the show. And, oh, you know, pleasure. first of all, your voice is so soothing. I just want to close my eyes and listen to you talk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's like our second soothing voice we've right. had on. And so well spoken. <laughs> yes, so well spoken. <laughs> um, I did want to give a shout out to one of our reviews on iTunes. So if you have iTunes on your computer, on your Apple phone, on your iPod, if your friend has one, if your mama had one, if your baby daddy got one, take their phone, leave a, a review and subscribe onto iTunes. And this one comes from Carol one two three. Four six, it says love it. It's, it's actually kind of for you, Tony. Mm -hmm. oh. It says Carla, girl, this podcast is so bomb. I feel like I'm with my friends. You're amazing, and Tony adds that extra spice to your podcast. Mm -hmm. Love it, and look forward to your podcast every week. Thank you for making my corporate days go by so fast, Caro. First of all, thank you so much, and I can relate to her by making the corporate days go by fast. Mm -hmm. I remember being, a, I, I can't listen to as many as I did back in the day when I was at work. Mm -hmm. But from nine a.m. to five, I had people in my head talking. Mm -hmm. On podcasting all I day I wish long. I knew about podcasting when I was uh, in the corporate world. The only thing I listened to was trap music. That's why I can rap Trina to you like back and forth and backwards. <laughs> that was it, bitch. But I wish I had some educational shit in my ear. Yes, and my audio books and stuff. So now I don't have as much time to be doing it. But I totally get it. So, Carol, girl, shout out to you. Thank you so much. Um, tag us on Instagram if you have it or Facebook. And then I want to see like what you look like and who you are, girl. So I can shout you out on there, too. Yes. And yes. Um, Daniel, where can they find you if they like social media or your yeah. organization? So they can find me on the book of faces, Daniel J. Downer. <laughs> <laughs> and my friend, you're doing so great on social media. He was so anti social media you know, until recently. Really episode. That is. I despise social media. <laughs> I have you do learned a great to make job. it work. Um, but yeah, you can find me on the book of the faces, Daniel J. Downer. <laughs> and you can find my amazing organization, the Bros and Combo Initiative, um, on Facebook and Instagram at Bros and Combo. Um, and, you know, you're more than welcome to slide in our dms if you have questions about just like being black being lgbtq mm -hmm. all of that great being stuff muslim. being muslim yes yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome yeah, so thank you so much for coming on and thank Thanks. you guys for thank listening you guys. Yes. and we'll be back next week bye